Coming down the stretch of the 2010 regular season, the Miami Dolphins traveled up to New York to take on the Jets. In a showcase of turnovers and bad quarterback play, this game gave the fans watching a whopping 16 points combined. It was simply a forgettable game. Except for this one particular play. On what seemed to be the most routine punt return ever, the Dolphins gunner Nolan Carroll was laying hurt on the Jets' sideline. And here's why. Well, it looked like he got tripped by one of the uh, members of the Jet staff. Watch the knee here being stuck out on purpose to trip up Nolan Carroll. Not sure who that person is, but they should be ashamed of themselves for that type of action. That has no place in any athletic event. That person was Jets assistant coach Sal Alosi. Two days following that game, he was suspended indefinitely after it was discovered that he instructed inactive Jets players to line up along the sideline to potentially impede opposing players. This alone is insane, but as you saw in the video, he took matters into his own hands. Welcome to the 2010 NFL season. Prior to the season kicking off, there was a lot of interesting storylines. In the NFC, longtime Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb was coming off of a Pro Bowl level season. How did they reward him? By trading him to their bitter rival, Washington. Now Philly was led by Kevin Cobb, or so we thought. Would either of these teams be able to beat out the Cowboys for the division? Up north, Brett Favre was still hanging in there, despite turning 41 in October of 2010. Would he be able to keep Minnesota as the team to beat in the NFC North? Or was his successor in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, going to take the throne? And lastly, could the New Orleans Saints keep the party going? Coming off of that Super Bowl victory, they had great odds at repeating. For the AFC, questions loomed about the Patriots. Could they bounce back and get back to their winning ways, or was the dynasty over? Many had the Mark Sanchez-led Jets beating them out for the division. Of course, then there's the boom or bust Cincinnati Bengals. Palmer looks back side, T.O. Terrell Owens, touchdown Cincinnati! The Bengals, who already had Chad Ochocinco, decided to add Terrell Owens. Into a physical running attack. Wide open is Terrell Owens, and that's a touchdown. Throughout the 2000s, no one brought the same loud and flamboyant style of football like Chad and T.O. Not only were their end zone celebrations epic, they had also been two of the best receivers in the game. Whether or not the Bengals were a Super Bowl contender, this team was going to be must watch TV. Looking out west, although the Chargers were favored to win the division, all eyes were on Denver because they drafted Tim Tebow. Tebow received a lot of storylines, but he barely played in 2010 and Denver wasn't even that good. Finally, we have the cream of the crop. The Indianapolis Colts were the Vegas odds favorite to win the Super Bowl. They were followed closely by the Chargers, Saints, Cowboys, and Packers. Manning's legacy at this point was defined by his regular season dominance, but more importantly, his postseason failures. With just one Super Bowl under his belt, was 2010 the year that he got his second Super Bowl? We'll get to the bulk of the 2010 season in a minute, but first, a word from our sponsor. Just in time for the holidays, Manscaped hooked me up with their new all-in-one performance package kit. A kit that's fully loaded with everything you need to take care of yourself. First up, the Lawnmower 3.0 a waterproof and cordless trimmer built with advanced skin-safe technology, helping you protect your most sensitive areas. Their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and their Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray are a game changer. It's the perfect stocking stuffer. New to the collection is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer, something I had no idea that I needed, but I'm glad I have it. The Weed Whacker has these 360 degree rotary blades and the same skin safe technology from the trimmer, so it helps prevent tugging and tears. Manscaped now has you covered from head to toe with their new and improved Shears 2.0 Luxury Six Piece Stainless Steel Nail Kit. This kit is clutch. If you're like me and struggle to know what you want for Christmas, it's time to add Manscaped to your holiday wish list. 
What's awesome is you'll also get two free gifts in this package. So don't wait and go to manscaped.com and use my promo code KTO to get 20% off. Plus you'll get free international shipping and those two free gifts. Shout out to Manscaped for the sponsor. Took Hester back to the 39. Picked up a block and here comes Hester. He might go. Devin Hester. Got it. Touchdown Chicago. That shot with time. Dances. Fires it. Touchdown. Focus on third down and one. Ryan down the field. Okay, I need you to try and picture this. You're sitting on your couch on a Monday night. You've been hearing that Michael Vick has been playing pretty good for the Eagles. So you flip on your TV and turn on ESPN just in time for the first offensive play of the game. First play from about the 12, and there is Vick, as you talked about, John, rolling and launching downfield for Deshaun Jackson, who accelerates Intercepted. It's picked off by Reed. His fourth interception with the lateral. Landry trying to get by Cross over the pylon. Touchdown. Great pressure to the line. And follow that. It picks it off. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown. Play. Gerard. Steps up. Fires. Mike Sid Walker. Knocked down. Oh, he caught it. Oh, unbelievable. Mike Thomas. Touchdown, Jags. Ball game. 50 yards. Whoa. When you look at the final regular season standings, you catch up on a lot of the preseason storylines quickly. The Patriots were legit, staking claim as the best team in the NFL. The New York Jets, though, were a fierce competitor as they split their season matchups with the Patriots. The Steelers and Ravens were led by their ferocious defenses, while the Bengals turned out to be a bust. Because I'm a Browns fan, I'll mention one of the few good things about them. This was the Peyton Hillis year. He had become a league-wide storyline as a dude who was built like a fullback, yet he was terrorizing opponents. This season got him on the Madden cover the following year. In the AFC South, the Colts finished with a low-key 10-6, and, and then the Kansas City Chiefs surprisingly took the AFC West. In the NFC, Donovan McNabb proved to not be the answer in Washington, and Michael Vick became the comeback player of the year in Philly. Brett Favre had lost his magic that he had in 2009, and he would play his final NFL snap. The Saints had been good, but the story was really about the Falcons, who were the special team in the NFC. Roddy White had a killer season, putting up all pro numbers. Then perhaps the best storyline of all, the Seattle Seahawks made it into the playoffs going seven and nine. This marked the worst record to ever make the NFL playoffs. Taking on the defending Super Bowl champs in the wild card, they were about to get annihilated. But despite the Seahawks having more losses than wins, they made a pretty important trade mid-season, acquiring this running back from Buffalo. As opposed to when the Saints have the ball. Oh, look at this run! What a run! Marshawn Lynch! Still on his feet! Has blockers now! He's dancing his way for the touchdown! Uh That's as good an effort as I've ever seen in my life from a running back. The 2010-2011 playoffs were kicked off in epic fashion, starting with the upsets of both Super Bowl teams from the previous year. The Jets squeaked by on this field goal, and Seattle had arguably the play of the decade by Marshawn Lynch to take them into the divisional round. Also in the wild card, Baltimore crushed Kansas City, and Green Bay Philly came down to the wire. 
In the divisional round, there was a bloodbath that took place between Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Despite the Ravens getting up on the scoreboard early, the Steelers pulled it out in the final minutes. Green Bay would end up blowing out number one seed Atlanta. This was behind a dominant four touchdown performance by Aaron Rodgers. Then the following day, the Bears, the team that I haven't talked about that much in this video, got the best of the still losing record Seahawks. Chicago was led by their top five NFL defense, guys like Brian Urlacher, Lance Briggs, and Julius Peppers. And then you can't forget Devin Hester. The big question mark about this team all year had been whether or not Jay Cutler was the guy. So many people hated this dude, yet here the Bears were going to the NFC Championship. Then in the final divisional game, the Jets faced off against the Patriots in New England. Third down snap. Sanchez to the end zone over Arrington and touchdown New York. Well, the weather, Phil. It is 15 with a wind chill of five and light breezes. Just what you would expect this time of year in Pittsburgh. Conference championship weekend left us two intriguing matchups. The Steelers versus the Jets, two teams built on tough defense and running the ball, and Chicago versus Green Bay, the classic historical rivalry of the NFL. The AFC Championship got out of hand in the first half. The Steelers pounced and never looked back. The Jets tried to make a fourth quarter comeback, but it was too little too late. The NFC Championship was a grinder. In a defensive battle, this single play was the defining moment. On third down and five, pressure, pass is picked off, and who is it? Big B.J. Raji for the touchdown. I saw this comment under the full game replay of the NFC Championship. It was a heartbreaker because Bears fans had waited five long years to get back to this point, only to have their quarterback decide he couldn't finish the game. Perhaps the worst part was Caleb Haney played better than Jay Cutler. The Bears have never quite been the same since this game. What's crazy is it's actually been worse for the Jets. They haven't even been to the playoffs since they lost that game. Super Bowl 45 featured two of the premier franchises in NFL history. The Pittsburgh Steelers, who had the most Super Bowl victories of any team, and the Green Bay Packers, who had the most overall championships of all time. The Steelers were recent victors of the title just two years before, whereas the Packers hadn't been in the big dance since Brett Favre took them there over a decade before. Now, it was the new man in town. This was Aaron Rodgers' chance to prove himself. Rodgers, Jordy Nelson, touchdown, Green Bay. Watching the two-minute warning here in Arlington over the middle, caught. Touchdown, Greg Jennings. Back in the end zone, Ward, touchdown. Mendenhall back in the game and into the end zone for the touchdown. Mendenhall. Loss of football, picked up by Bishop. Rodgers looking left, comes to his right, Jennings, touchdown. Looks again, floated for Wallace, what a throw. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Virgin this season defensively. Roethlisberger on a pitch, successful to Antoine Randall L. This ball is incomplete, but it was a fourth down pass, and Green Bay will take over. The final snap of Super Bowl 45, the Green Bay Packers have won the Super Bowl. Rodgers accounting looks like we're going to get some pressure on the inside by the 49ers. Good protection, wide open is Donald and Driver. And he pitches it all, gets away. 